Well, as you probably know, I don't advertise, so to speak, <laughs> scripture en masse. Uh, there's all sorts of good truths and some horrendous byroads in scripture. Every scripture, as far as I can see. Um, I'm hesitate, hesitant to say that includes John 17. <laughs> I'm pretty clear it does include John's Gospel. There are things in it I wouldn't agree with. And there's a lot more in the rest of the Bible I don't agree with. And there's a lot in something like the Bhagavad Gita that I do agree with. And a lot that I don't. And I expect that's the same with every every theological and philosophical view. Plato, the lot. You see, we are individual. We are unique. And from my point of view, and the Jesus story point of view. We are God's children. And he loves us. And his ability and loving kindness means that he is in no way prevented from harmonizing our uniqueness into his glorious family. We're born into it. We exist because of him. We are his children. And he is well able to bring us to full adult life as he loves and values it. His fellowship, his reason for living, his meaning to life in his kingdom, kingdom of heaven, and in fact, there is no other. For this universe is just this classroom. It's not even a classroom. It's his homeschooling. <laughs> of you and me. That's as I see it. And I'm extremely happy with the way I see it. Look, I don't mean I don't suffer difficulties. I'm in the world of uncertainty. Of course I suffer difficulties. But I'm alive, fully alive. Joy keeps flooding over me again. Oh, you're bipolar, Marshall. <laughs> That's true. I mean, I can be in tears watching a, like I mentioned in an earlier recording, um, Tyler Henry's program, some of his ministry. Wow. The tears of devotion. God will exchange your tears of distress and despair, the tears of joy and devotion, and overwhelming gratitude and thankfulness, such that your whole being sings for joy in his loving company forever, always and forever. Bless you. Thank you, Dad. Hey, I chatted with a chap who was uh, being the evangelist in the street yesterday down in Frankton here in Hamilton at the market. And he accosted me in the street. He said, would you like to? I said, no, not really. <laughs> but go on. <laughs> I thought, oh, I'm going to be hammered by the gospel, you know. Anyway, he said, oh, just um, one or two things. Um, and, and anyway, one... In, there were four sort of uh, things, but one of them was um, a 
tell me, how many um, months in the year have 28 days? And of course you immediately think, oh, February 28, 29, and well, one a year, uh, but, um, and he says, no. Nah. And you think, ah, of course we've been led astray, it's a trick question. All of them have 28 days, always. <laughs> it's just that some have more. And you know, it crosses my mind now that Christianity is like that. In fact, every religion is like that. They're the only one with 28 days. And then you realize, hang on, they've all got 28 days. It's just that the other extra days have blinded you to the fact that they've got the 28 days. You know, I can talk to this Muslim lady of some year or so ago, and uh, we end up praying together. Why? Because we've got so much in common. And well, we've got a few things that are different. Yeah, of course. We know that. What's that got to do with it? We've got 28 things in common. The things that we have... Uh, in addition to that, well, they're in addition to that, yeah, I know they're there. But we prayed together, because we love each other. Thank you, Dad.